Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm taking you on a journey to one of Europe's most charming and vibrant city, Porto in Portugal. Nestled along the banks of the Douro River, Porto is a city that perfectly blends historic charm with modern vibrancy. In this video, we'll be exploring some of the most fascinating places you must visit when you're in Porto. From its iconic bridges and stunning architecture to its world-famous port wine cellars and lively markets, get ready to discover the hidden gems and popular attractions that make Porto a must-visit destination. First up on our tour is the iconic Clerigos Church, a symbol of Porto's rich history and stunning architecture. Clerigos Church, or Igreja dos Clerigos, is an outstanding example of Baroque architecture. It was designed by the Italian architect Nicola Nassoni and completed in 1763. Its elaborate facade and intricate details are a testament to Nassoni's genius and the Baroque style's grandeur. Next on our journey through Porto is the stunning São Bento train station, a true gem that blends transportation with art and history. São Bento train station, or Estacal de São Bento, was inaugurated in 1916 and is built on the site of the former Benedictine monastery of São Bento de Ave Maria, from which it takes its name. The station's construction marked a significant milestone in Porto's urban development and connectivity. Designed by Portuguese architect José Marques de Silva, the station's exterior boasts a Beaux-Arts architectural style, which was popular in the early 20th century. Its grand facade and elegant design make it a standout structure in the city. One of the most captivating features of São Bento station is its interior, adorned with approximately 20,000 azulejo tiles. These blue and white ceramic tiles, created by artist Jorge Calaco, depict significant historical events in Portugal's history, everyday rural life, and the evolution of transportation. The intricate murals make the station an art gallery in its own right. Maintaining the delicate azulejo tiles has been a significant challenge. Over the years, exposure to weather conditions and the high foot traffic within the station have led to deterioration. Efforts to restore and preserve these tiles have sparked debates over the best methods to protect this national treasure while ensuring the station remains functional for daily commuters. As Porto continues to modernize its infrastructure, São Bento Station faces the tension between upgrading facilities for efficiency and preserving its historical and architectural integrity. Some argue that modernization efforts might compromise the station's heritage value, while others believe updates are necessary to keep up with contemporary demands. Our next stop in Porto is the stunning Church of St. Ildefonso, an architectural gem that stands proudly near Batalha Square. The Church of St. Ildefonso, or Igreja de Santo Ildefonso, was completed in 1739. It was built on the site of a previous chapel dedicated to St. Ildefonso of Toledo, a 7th century bishop. The church's history reflects Porto's deep religious heritage and its evolving architectural styles. Next on our tour of Porto is the magnificent Dom Luis I Bridge, an engineering marvel that has become one of the city's most iconic landmarks. The Dom Luis I Bridge, often simply called the Luis I Bridge, was designed by the German engineer Tia Feil Sierig, a disciple of Gustav Eiffel. It was inaugurated in 1886 and spans the Douro River, connecting Porto with the neighboring city of Villa Nova de Gaia. One of the unique features of the bridge is its double-decker construction. The upper deck carries the Metro do Porto light rail line and offers pedestrian pathways with stunning views of the river and the city, while the lower deck accommodates vehicular traffic and additional pedestrian walkways. At the time of its completion, the Luis I Bridge boasted the longest iron arch in the world, with a central span of 172 meters, 
564 feet. Its innovative design and impressive scale was celebrated as a major achievement in bridge engineering. The bridge offers some of the most breathtaking panoramic views of Porto's historic center, the Ribera district, and the wine cellars of Villa Nova de Gaia. It's a favorite spot for photographers and tourists looking to capture the beauty of the city from above. Over the years, the bridge has faced structural integrity concerns due to its age and the constant heavy traffic it endures. Periodic maintenance and reinforcement efforts are necessary to ensure its safety, sparking debates about the best ways to preserve this historic structure while meeting modern demands. Similar to other historic landmarks, the Don Luis I Bridge faces the challenge of modernization. Proposals to upgrade the bridge for better traffic flow and increased capacity often clash with preservationist efforts to maintain its original design and historical significance. Finding a balance between these two priorities remains a contentious issue. The bridge's popularity with tourists, especially those seeking the perfect photo, has led to concerns about overcrowding on the pedestrian walkways. The influx of visitors can sometimes disrupt the daily commute of locals and raise safety issues, prompting discussions about potential measures to manage the flow of people more effectively. The bridge connects Porto with Villa Nova de Gaia, the latter being home to many of the region's famous port wine cellars. Some argue that the economic benefits of tourism and commerce are unevenly distributed between the two cities, with Villa Nova de Gaia sometimes feeling overshadowed by Porto's more prominent status. Our next destination is one of Porto's most significant landmarks, the Se Cathedral. This majestic structure, perched atop a hill in the historic center, offers a captivating blend of architectural styles and a rich history. The Se Cathedral, or Cathedral D.A. Se, dates back to the 12th century. It was initially built as a Romanesque fortress church, reflecting its dual role as a place of worship and a defensive stronghold. Its imposing appearance is a testament to Porto's medieval past. Over the centuries, the cathedral has undergone numerous renovations and expansions, incorporating Gothic, Baroque, and neoclassical elements. The Gothic cloister, added in the 14th century, and the Baroque loggia and facade from the 18th century, highlight the cathedral's architectural evolution. The Se Cathedral has been the site of many significant events in Porto's history. It was here that King John I married Filippo of Lancaster in 1387, sealing the Anglo-Portuguese alliance. The cathedral's long history makes it a cornerstone of Porto's cultural heritage. As one of Porto's top tourist attractions, the cathedral sees a significant number of visitors each year. This influx can sometimes lead to overcrowding, which poses risks to the delicate interiors and can disrupt the serene atmosphere of the cathedral. Managing the balance between welcoming tourists and preserving the sanctity of the site is an ongoing issue. Our next stop in Porto takes us to the lively and picturesque Case D.A. Ribera, a vibrant riverside district that is the heartbeat of the city. Case D.A. Ribera is one of the oldest and most historic districts in Porto. Its origins date back to medieval times, and it has always been a bustling center of commerce and trade. The area played a crucial role in the city's development, particularly during the Age of Discovery. 
In 1996, Case D.A. Ribera, along with the rest of Porto's historic center, was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This recognition highlights the area's cultural and architectural significance, as well as its contribution to the historical narrative of Porto. Next on our tour of Porto is Mercado do Bolao, a vibrant and historic market that embodies the city's spirit and tradition. Mercado do Bolao, or Bolao Market, dates back to 1839. It is one of Porto's oldest and most beloved markets, located in the heart of the city. The market has been a central hub for local commerce and community life for nearly two centuries. The market's current building, completed in 1914, is an outstanding example of neoclassical architecture. Its grand facade, ironwork, and spacious courtyards create a unique and charming atmosphere that has captivated generations of visitors. The market is more than just a place to shop, it's a cultural experience. The lively interactions between vendors and customers, the vibrant displays of goods, and the bustling atmosphere provide a glimpse into the daily life and traditions of Porto's residents. Mercado do Bolao has long been a gathering place for the community. It's a spot where locals catch up with neighbors, share stories, and maintain social connections. The market's role as a social hub is a key part of its enduring appeal. And that brings us to the end of our tour of Porto, Portugal. We hope you enjoyed discovering the rich history, stunning architecture, and vibrant culture of this beautiful city with.